Good evening, everyone. It is now 6.02 p.m. on January 11th, 2022. My name is Angela Schofield, and I will be opening the Lemons Air Conservation Commission public meeting. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting slash public hearings will be conducted via remote access. Everything that is said will be recorded, as well as everything in the chat will become a part of the public record. And if I can ask all my commissioners to please turn on your cameras. All right, so this once again is Angela Schofield from the City Lemons and Conservation Department. I will now start the roll call. Chairman Chuck Raymond. Here. Thank you. Vice Chair Elizabeth Ricci Blair. Here. Thank you. Jeffrey Goyne. Here. Thank you. Richard Gellick. Here. Thank you. Michael Seeky. Here. Thank you. Kenneth Ridlin. Kenneth Ridlin is absent from the meeting. Um, and Amanda Lansing is also absent from the meeting. I will now hand it off to our chair. I can figure out how to turn my microphone on. Thank you, Angela. Um, all right, so it looks like we had nothing under um, conservation land management and no new hearings. So we'll move on to continued hearings. Um, so I'll, I'll read this one and uh, read this one. Uh, Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, the Lumberstone Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation or ANRAD to affirm the extent of all jurisdictional wetland resource areas and associated buffer zones. Uh, address, Mar I assume it's Marcello Ave. Map and parcel numbers 244 to, 4, to 244 to 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and no DEP file number. Angela, what, what do you have here? Or, or I'm sorry, is there somebody here to present on that? Yes, hi. Angela here. You? Um, just so, oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I just want to say there has a DEP number was issued today and it is 1991143. Thank you. Do I need to read that in, uh, Angela, or, or was is that sufficient? No, I read it in, so you're fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. So um, my name is Kristen Farr from Hancock Associates representing um, North Star Family Services and this ANRAD. Um, yes, the DEP number was issued and uh, we have no, we had no um, pushback on the line. It, it was not in question. So I would ask that you issue the order of resource area delineation. Okay, thank you very much, Kristen. I appreciate it. And Angela, well, well, what was what, the best course of action at this point? Hi, this is Angela here. Um, so, Kristen, I'm not sure. Did you see there was a comment from DEP that they're looking for the, the wetland sheets, the wetland data sheets? Nope. Kristen, what happened? Oh, crap. <laughs> we can hear you, Kristen. Your video, video went away, that's all. Oh, um, I have, I have, a, sorry. Yeah, I have a slow connection. So it told me to shut the video off. Okay. Um, I just, I'm, you're kind of going, going in and out for me. So um, what questions did you have? I, I might've missed something. Um, this is Angela here. So I just wanted to make sure, because I did read the DEP comments on the um, DEP file number issuance. And it said that they, Gary had wanted the wetland data sheets. Um, so our feeling is that since the line is not in question, that they're unnecessary. Um, 
and that you know DEP's role is advisory. So given that the commission didn't have any issues with the line, uh, we didn't think the sheets were required. This is Angela and that is fine. Um, I'm trying to scroll through here on the form. Um, so in the ANRED application, they did the applicant did go into details about the bordering vegetative wetland. Um, and they did discuss the series and different species that were in it, which is typically what the data sheets would have, as well as the, the data sheets also just have the percentages. Um, and it kind of shows those different circles and how much is in certain areas and how they delineate it. Um, so it would be completely up to the commission um, how they want to proceed from here. Um, uh, Angela, we'll, we'll kind of t take your lead on this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to be, if there, if the wetland lines are not in question, um, and I, 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 I don't think I've, I've, I don't, re I'm not sure if this has been before us or not. I, I don't recall seeing this um, applicant before, although it could be mistaken. But if if if, if the if the wetland line is in question, I, I don't think we need to be. I don't need. I don't think we need to belabor the, the point too much. Uh, do any of the, the, the uh, commissioners ha have any any comments or, or uh, other other views on the matter? This is Rich Gullick. Uh, I'm still a rookie at this, but as I told Angela on the phone the other day, I thought this application was pretty well done and thorough um, and detailed. Well, so well, I, don't, well, I don't know what's I don't know what's on the checklist, Chuck, but it didn't seem yeah. You know, I wouldn't necessarily assume it's needed. Okay. Given all the information that's been provided, as Angela was kind of suggesting. Okay. Well, I appreciate and the feedback, I, Rich. Thank thank you very much. I appreciate the feedback. Um, the, the 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 fact that it's detailed is kind of beside the point because they, they should be detailed. That uh, if if we gave everybody if approved everything because it was detailed, we we. we I prove everything. <laughs> um, but Angela, I, I, like I said, I, if the wetland lines aren't in question, um, I'd, I'd rather not have to keep having them come back if 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 if, um, if there's if there's no real need. That's kind of my viewpoint on unless somebody else disagrees. Chuck, this is Mike Seeky. I totally agree with you. Okay, thank you. Angela, with, with with that in mind, what's what's the best? Uh, should, should we just uh, go ahead and, and and make a motion on the on this uh, on the applicant? Hi, this is Angela here. Um, so yeah, the commission can most definitely obviously make a motion, but I would recommend um, that we we still need to close the public hearing. So we open the public hearing to anyone in the public who would like to speak, and oh, then we'd yes, have yes. to close the public hearing officially, and then the commission uh, can make a motion. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. So I'll um, I'll then op open the, the the hearing up to to the public. Um, if, if there's anyone on the call that wishes to speak on the hearing or have any questions, but you, uh, you're welcome to do so now. But uh, if you if you do, please state your name and address be, uh, before speaking. Second time. Third and final time. All right, thank you. So, so we'll, I'll go ahead and close the, the public hearing portion of the uh, of, of of the hearing. Uh, is is the, Angela? So at this point, we would do we should we call for a, a motion on the matter? Is that what you said? Hi, this is Angela here. Yes. Um, so that now the commission can have any discussion, um, and then someone can make a motion to either to issue an order of delineation or for us to continue it, um, and the motion for the order of delineation would be that the boundaries described on the reference plans above in the and in the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation are accurately drawn for the following resource areas and the resource areas where bordering vegetative wetlands all right thank you angela so i'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to either to um for the uh, the the, uh, the agent's recommendation uh as she just stated or to continue it i'll i'll do whatever anybody wants to move Chuck, this is Mike Seeke. I, I would uh, like to take Angela's, I think we should take Angela's uh, recommendation. So is, 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 is that a motion? motion? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Do, do I have a second? This is Jeffrey going I'll second. Thank you, Jeffrey. 
This is Angela Schofield. The rest of the vote will be done by roll call. Vice Chair Elizabeth Ricci Blair, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. Drew Gellick, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. And Chairman Chuck Raymond, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. So the motion carries to issue an ORAD for the Marcelo Ave um, delineation, DEP file number 1991143. Thank you, Angela. By the way, I just noticed that the lights are up behind my head, so I hope I'm sufficiently haloed uh, for this hearing. <laughs> um, Angela, you. I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate it. Um, Angela, so I, I understand that, that the next three uh, um, three items on the agenda have, have been continued, but I'll go ahead and read them into the record anyway. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, the Lemister Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the construction of a new duplex dwelling with associated driveway, grading, and utility connections. Address 1284 Central Street, map and parcel 566-1-1, DEP file number 199-1140. Uh, the next one, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, the Lumberton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the construction of a new single family dwelling with associated driveway, grading, and utility connections. Address Leggett Hill Road, lot four, excuse me, map and parcel 566-1-4, DP file number 199-1135. Uh, next one, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, the Lumberton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the removal of a fixed dock and replacement with a floating dock, address 27 Elm Street, map and parcel 121-5, and still waiting on a DEP file number. Are all those correct, Angela, as far as you're concerned? This is Angela here. Yes, um, we're still waiting for the superseding certificates of compliance from the state for the Leggett Hill hearings. Um, and I have not heard anything from Mr. Trench on the 27 Elm Street hearing. All righty. So we'll see what happens then uh, at the next hearing. Thank you, Angela. All right, rapidly moving down the agenda here. Uh, nothing under new business or old business. And we have we have a certificate of compliance, 24 Monument Street. I'm sorry, 24 Monument Square, DP number 199-954. What do you have there, Angela? This is um, Angela Schofield here. So this is an obviously an older hearing. I do see that Mr. McCarty um, is on the call to represent his client. This is the Rollstone Bank building. Um, I'm pulling up the plans right now. Bear with me one second. Mm -hmm. I have a very slow connection today for some reason. It's the cold. It has to be. It's too cold. Too cold. There it is. So let me see, try to pull up the new one. Um, come on. Angel, would it be easier if the applicant pulled it, pulled it up if they have it? Do you have it up, um, Patrick? I can, yep. Thank you, sorry. I have too many things open up my computer right now. It's like so slow. Let me give you um, presenter capabilities. I apologize. Oh, well, these things happen to worries. At least you're able to have the hearing. Ah, that work? That is always a class. Yeah. All right. Gold star for today. So good evening for the record, Patrick McCarty, McCarty Engineering, here on behalf of uh, Rollstone Bank and Trust. This is the uh, their new building that's downtown Lemonster, where Friendly's used to be. Um, we had permitted the site back in 2012, 13 uh, era. They completed the whole project. And uh, when Jeff Avini was working with Angela on the uh, Grit Manusnock Brook Greenway project, he realized that a certificate of compliance was never requested for the site. So we hired uh, Whitman and Bingham to go out and do an as-built survey, which you see here before you. Um, 
submitted that with the form 8A uh, request and Angela had just asked us to add the floodplain line on there. And I forget what the second item was, Angela, but um, in any event, that's the revised plan this evening. And we're just, it was built according to plan. Um, back when we did this, we did the demolition of uh, friendlies and the site work for the new building, site work for the new parking. And we actually stopped at the granite curb line uh, that runs here, kind of parallels the brook. And the Greenway project did everything from the brook, from that curb line to the brook, the sidewalks is, and benches and, and whatnot under a different order of condition. So that, that curb line was the line of demarcation between the two projects at the time. So just trying to clear up the title and, and get the COC in place. And so happy to answer any questions. Thank you, I'm sorry, was it Patrick? Yes. Thank you, Patrick, appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm just, uh, this is neither, neither here nor there, but just I'm having trouble placing this project in my head. Is just the building next to what used to be Ryan time right in town? Yes. Yep. That's now the fix. Okay. Yep. Right next to that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So that that's the that would be the building at the, uh, at, the at the top, more or less. Yeah. Right here. Right here is where yep. Ryan Got time it. is. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, and, and Angela, what uh, in terms of certificate, certificate of compliance, is this something we have to open up to the public if if the if the, if the commission members don't have any comments? Hi, this is Angela here. Um, no, we don't. We do not need to open it up to the public. Okay. Um, my recommendation is I've been out to the site, um, and the second item, Patrick, was the riverfront area was on the plan. Oh, right. um, that really Thank is you. the only resource area here. None of the work really took place in the floodplain. Um, I just wanted it on the plan just for my, you know, OCD in my files. <laughs> sure. No problem. But I'm um, looking. I did go out to the site. I took a look. Everything was done according to plan. Um, and I would have no issues recommending that the commission issue a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 199-954-24 Monument Square. All right. Thank you, Angela. Uh, with that, I will uh, first ask the commission if they have any questions or comments. Nothing. Okay. Uh, uh, that said, then I'll, I'll open up for for a motion to issue issue a certificate of compliance for what was it, twenty four Monument Square? Is that the yes? Is there a motion for that? This is Jeffrey going. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Jeffrey. Do we have a second? This is Liz. I'll second. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. This is Angela Schofield. The rest of the vote will be done by roll call. Richard Gullick, how do you vote? I vote aye. I vote aye. Thank you. Michael Seeky, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. And Chairman Chuck Raymond, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. So the motion carries to issue a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 1999954-24 Monument Square. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Have a good night. Have a great night. You too. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. All right. Uh, moving on down down the agenda for extension under extension permits. Uh, Ninety six Exchange Street, Herons Landing two one ninety nine dash ten sixty one, new expiration date of July third, twenty twenty two. Is there anybody, is, Angela? Is there something? That, is there anybody to present on the on the, uh, on the matter? This is Angela here. Um, so I have not heard back from Mr. Amaro or Mr. Xeris. I do believe that Mr. Xeris um, is out of the state right now. Okay. Uh, but we're just waiting for the erosion controls to be put up and then I would feel comfortable with the um, extension permit being issued. I just would like to see the erosion controls up before they restart work. Okay, and what's, what's that, uh, straw wattle? Uh, it was a, it's hay bales and silt fencing due to the slope in the site. Um, the site has a lot of high tall growing plants um so the hay bales were kind of necessary okay just make yourself a note excuse me uh this is jeffrey going is that something they gotta wait until all the snow is melted before they can do that this is angela so i in the past i've actually had sites where they shoveled where they were putting the hay bales in the silt fence um and they have a machine that can go in 
Uh, so it is up to the applicant though. They may want to just wait until the spring or until we have a thaw, or they may hire um, a company that has one of those. Oh, I think we might have lost. Still fencing and lay the hay bales down. I kind of come in okay. and trend them. I've honestly, I've gone up to a roading control inspections where the contractor has shoveled out the. You're kind of going in there a little bit, Angela. Is this better? Um, so yes, you know, they, are, they are able to do it in the winter or they can do it in the spring. Um, sometimes they'll hire a company that has a machine that can dig into the ground um, and entrench the silt fence. Okay, thanks. Angela, this is Mike, this is Mike ahead, Sagan. Mike. I just have a quick question on, because uh, uh, I'm a rookie too. Where does the, uh, the how do we determine uh, that a hay bale versus a wattle is sufficient just for my, my own education? Good question. This is Angela here. Um, so it is up to the, you know, it is site specific. Like there are some certain sites where, for example, um, a really steep slope that has, you know, a lake or a pond at the bottom of it, um, hay bales might not be the easiest to install. Um, so then you might want to use the straw wattle um, with stakes to kind of stake them in. You can stake in hay bales, but they do tend to decompose quite rapidly. Yeah. Um, and so it does go site by site. A lot of times our applications, the engineers will have a suggestion for what they think is best. Um, and then as you know, the commissioners go out to the site, we can kind of use our common sense and say, there's a really steep slope here. You might want to do straw wattles instead. And on some sites, it really doesn't matter. It is, you know, like right now, it's really difficult to get straw wattles. Um, so I've had a couple of sites where I said that hay bales were fine. Um, if that's what they could find, just something's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. So the straw wattles are considered a better form of control than, than hay bales are. Is that true? True statement? In my opinion, they are. I believe they are easier um, to put down and they are also easier, easier to access and they're easier to clean up because all you have to do is kind of cut them yep. and then you pull the plastic part out and you're all done. Yep. Uh, but there are some situations where hay bales are necessary. Okay, yeah, thank you. This is Chuck Raymond. That was a good question, Michael. Appreciate it. A Angel, just a question on my part as well. When it says new expiration of July 3rd, does that mean that the with the, with, with the extension, the ex expiration date would be July 3rd? Is that what that means? Hi, this is Angela here. So during the pandemic, um, Governor Baker, he did toll all permits that would have expired during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the way that they're told is that from the start, I believe it was... I want to say it was March 10th of 2020 through June. I forget what date it was. The order was lifted off the top of my head, but it was about 400 something days. Um, certain permits will get that extension. So for example, if it expired on September 1st, so it'll get from September 1st until when the order was lifted, that many days minus the business days and weekends, I mean, sorry, holidays and weekends out of that time, that would be their new, ex their new expiration. Very luckily, one of my um, peers in the conservation community, they developed an Excel sheet that does all the math for you. <laughs> so I just input it into the Excel sheet so it calculates it for me. So okay. this is the new order, and then the commission would be extending it for three years past this date. Past okay. July 3rd. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Thank you. Appreciate the, appreciate the uh, clarification. Pre uh, anybody else have any questions on the extension permit? No? Okay. All right, good. Well, moving on. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck oh, this yep. is Rick. So when it says new ex, new expiration, that really is the current expiration, right? Right, correct. Third. So perhaps that could be changed in the future. Right. I'll okay. clarify that up for you. Where? All right. So, Angela, so it might be then on the, if this is still on the agenda, for, well, it will be for the next hearing. If maybe instead of new expiration uh, change, revised expiration July 3rd, something like that. Sure, I can okay. do that. Thank you. Current, current revised expiration date or something, something, something. Just make it a little clearer. That'd be good. Thank you. All right, nothing under communications, moving on down the agenda. Under meeting minutes, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like. Um, Angela, I, I, I didn't see 
some of these in, I, I don't recall seeing these in the in the email we got did, did, did we have these not the last one no okay not the last uh, email it was just one okay this is angela here um i do believe i sent out i sent out two different emails with these um but i can double check and make sure that it went through um the microsoft outlook that the city uses did have a network crash a couple weeks ago oh. and some emails didn't go through, I guess. I'm um, just finding out now, I like I missed a bunch of emails that were supposed to come in. Um, but I can double check and resend them out. If anyone does have good. any comments, um, if you want to email them to me before the next meeting, I can kind of compile them all into one file and then email them back out to everybody. Okay. Hey, Angela, this Angela, is Michael. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, my, Michael, no, Michael, go ahead. Uh, Angela, are these out of, I didn't check. I, I was working off the email today when I was communicating with you. Are these on the Google? They're, I assume they're on the Google Drive, correct? Um, this is Angela here. No, they're, they are not because they're not technically um, open to the public and the Google Drive is open uh, to the public. Okay. Um, I can make a separate folder, make it private just for us if the commission would like for the meeting minutes. Um, that's fairly easy to do. Yeah, that'll be cool. pretty helpful. Here's here's what I was going to propose, if I could. This is Mike Seeky again. Is that, and I and I did it. I know it was kind of late in an email. Uh, I noticed, and, and I'm a rookie, so please bear with me here. Uh, I noticed that there the 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 transcriptions are it's sometimes vague, where um, the the person that's transcribing will take the the, the first person and 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 be using we or they. And it wasn't real clear to me who they were if, if in a forensic audit, somebody was going to look at this. And it was like Chris Anderson, I knew it was Chris Anderson who was saying it, or it was uh, uh, Peter Bobenzi who was saying it because we were all at, the, at that session. But somebody coming in forensically looking at these might not know that. And I, you know, I, I've done enough contracts in my life that I'd be willing to take on the, the, the role after the meeting if, if Angela wanted to send me the, the minutes as they're transcribed. I could take kind of the, the first approach of taking the grammatical errors out and, and, and qualifying who is saying what. So it's, it seems to be so that if somebody were to read it, they could understand who was making the statements. And then I could get them back to Angela rather than all of us looking at maybe seeing the same grammatical errors and overwhelming her with five, four or five uh, emails of changes that are all the same. So if we had a process where I did it the first pass, I'd send it back to Angela, she could verify it. Use, I could use track changes on Microsoft Word if everybody has that. And she could, we could even keep a, you know, a, a, a tra each track change would have a, a version number. So anybody doing a forensic audit could see what the transcription was, what the changes were to clarify it, and what the final minutes were. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I'm willing to, you know, to do that if if it's helpful for it. I think that'd be very helpful. This is Chuck Raymond. Angela, would would, would that be uh, useful for you? This is Jeffrey Goyne. Is that something that we can legally do? Because is the transcription that, that was, supposed that to be that was, illegal? That was my real question. Well, well, that's the thing. The trans the, so the transcription is a legit transcription of everything that was said. So if that's the case, then it's not intended to be, you know, uh, really defined like that. Interpret. It's a legal, you know, yeah. it, so it, it, if it's supposed to be just word for word for what we say, then uh, I don't know that the extra step is, uh, you know, yeah, if we can do it legally or not, or if it's, you know, it's legit just supposed to be the transcription. A company who has a certain transcriber can do that, you know, because then if, if we think that, somebody said something but they didn't say it can they then come back and say hey i didn't say that you got it wrong you know what i'm well, saying and and yeah and, and that was the reason i i posed this question but it, what i was saying is that we could leave the original uh transcription <laughs> as the, as the document and then have a version that is the grammatical errors and the in any changes that seem necessary there so in a forensic audit somebody could see the published notes and, and go back in time to see the original transcription as well. But if this is just going to create more of a headache, then, you know, it's fine. I just, I'd like, I'd like to offload some of that stuff from Angela because she's awfully busy and I'm, I'm retired. So I've got time. 
Uh, hold, hold on for hold on a second. Let, 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 before we get too far, Rich, I want to get to you. But uh, Angela, can you can you can you can you comment on the on the discussion so far? Let us know if we're heading in the right direction. So Angela here. Um. So I tr I appreciate it so much, Mike. Thank you. Um. It would be really helpful to have somebody else take a look at them, take the grammatical errors out, errors out, because then I can just go back and edit the final. That would be super helpful for me, and it'd take probably. 10, 15 hours back up from my week right now, um, oh. going through all these old meeting minutes. But I wanted to also say, so the scribe that the commission has, she does go over the transcripts. Um, the ones that we're looking at right now, because we didn't have a scribe who did the meeting minutes for about a year. Um, they So she literally was doing like 30, I think it was something like 30 meeting minutes within a two week period of time. So there are, you know, understandably, there are gonna be some grammatical errors. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, but what she does is she does kind of shorten it down, take out some of the things that we say. For example, you know, us, you know, talking about the weather or something that isn't necessarily pertinent to the permit, <laughs> because these meetings are recorded, and so there will always be a recording. Um, Columbus Access Television also does um, post it on their YouTube. So, it kind of shortens it down so that it's a little bit what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of basically down to what the meeting was about um, and the important parts, for example, special conditions, who yep. uh, motion made the motions, those things are in the meeting minutes. All right, well, that's a good perspective. Thank, thank you, Angela. And oh, this is Chuck Raymond. Rich, you had something to say? Yeah, Rich Gullick here. Um, all eight of those minutes were sent out, out by Angela a while were ago. They? I've been through okay. all of them, gave her comments a month ago. Okay. I, mean, I have actually have them on my hard drive, so I know I saved them. So okay. they're out there. I'd love to see us get move them on, get them off the agenda. Following yeah. up on Mike's comment, I did what Mike did, and I read all of them. And it's ones that had spots where it was garbled. Um, Jeffrey, they obviously missed some of the words here and there. Those are, in my view, draft minutes that need to be corrected by people who are at the meetings, preferably more than one person. I think it should include Angela with a good read and one or two of us at least. Um, everybody if you want, but I doubt that'll happen. It'll stay on here for a long time. One of the things there, if I believe that my memory was correct, and I think Mike and you, Chuck, were at the visit, um, that particular site visit, but they said they were going to do something, still going to do it even though it wasn't required, but the minutes actually said they weren't going to do it. We'll see that in right. one of the corrections that I made. Um, and if, if I got that right. Um, okay. That was my impression. So we do want to correct things like that because this is the official record but so they need to be corrected and that's why we do need to review them that's why i struggle to vote on ones that i wasn't at the meeting and i have no right. clue of the ones in 2020 understood and so understood. i struggle with that so thank, thanks for letting me explain that all right there, there's a version out there and a couple of them that have my track editing in them and you guys should have those it's pretty minor but and, and i didn't do it as thorough as mike is suggesting but Correcting, making sure the pronouns are all spelled out. That's a good idea. <laughs> no, no. You're going to have to correct mine. So it doesn't no, matter. you're right. I, mean, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, you say, okay, thanks. But I think, right. I think an important thing this is Mike Seeky again. An important thing is that we do them immediately after the meeting. Whenever the transcription comes in, it's fresh in our minds, and whoever's going to yeah. do the edit, and, you know, Rich has actually stood up to the plate to do this before I, I started doing it. But it's important that we, you know, I think we do it right away, so while it's fresh in our minds, and uh, and clean them up as much as possible. But it, but I think that I think Jeff, to Jeff's point, the real question is, do we need some sort of legal approval to say we're changing what this transcription has, how this has been transcribed? And that's a very valid question because you know I certainly don't know the answer to that. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even play a lawyer on TV. Um, but so I, I'm, not, so I'm not a lawyer. This is Rich. I'm not a lawyer. But what my experience um, working in, in other venues was, yes, you can correct the minutes. Okay. Absolutely. You, you, you can't approve them if they're absolutely wrong. You just, you just shouldn't do that. So. Okay. All right. So I'll, uh, let's, let's, let's do it this sense. way. Let's, let's, let's put uh, Angela. Um, if, if you think it would be worthwhile to approach the, 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 the city attorney about the legality of this, please, please, please feel free. If you don't think we need to, that's perfectly fine, but we should, we should at least give it a yay or nay. Secondly, um, maybe the, instead of, instead of emailing 
the minutes themselves out. If you can, if you can set up that that uh, the Google Drive that'd be ju uh, private ju just for us. That way, we we can go in and, and make edits. Um, we we can all edit the same document instead of, instead of sending Angela, uh, you know, four sets of edits for each for each each um, right. set of minutes. Yes. Uh, that way, there'd be edits all in one document. That might be easier. Angela, is this does it sound like something that would be helpful for you? This is Angela here. Um, so I would probably just go to the city clerk, Caitlin Huffman, um, mm -hmm. to kind of see what the meeting minute requirements would be. She, mm -hmm. um, I don't think it would require an attorney level. So I can discuss that with her when I get back okay. to the office. Um, and then I can most definitely make the Google Drive. If it's not up and running by Friday, somebody just reminds me. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, 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 uh, let's see. Um, I'll make a note, remind Angela about Google Drive. Okay. This is Mike Seek again. Rich, you've gone through all of those, right? All eight that are listed here? No, I went through the first four, the 2021s. I was not right, present. The ones you were at, yeah. So I didn't, I was reading them wouldn't do me any good. But I right. did go through the four and did whatever I thought were edits needed to correct them and clarify things. Without getting too incredibly detailed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, this is Chuck. There, there were two or three that were before my time as well. All right. So, um, and I, I've, I've looked at them. I, but I, I, since we had didn't vote on them yet, I, 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 I know they were on the agenda last time. I don't recall which ones I read, um, because I, I don't think I read them all, e e even for the the five or six that were, well, were during my time. So uh, I'll probably have to go through them again. Angela, yeah. So let us know when those are up on the Google Drive, and then I'll. Uh, why don't we all just try to make make our best effort. Uh, to, to review, review review the minutes of the meetings that we were at. Does that sound good to you, Angela? Yes, it sounds great to me. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Good. Chuck, then, we'll, then, we'll, then hopefully we'll vote on those in the next meeting. Yes. Chuck, the uh, ones from 2020, were people here who are going to be able to review them, or are we just, or can we pass those today? Uh, so, I think I think I was at the one, uh, I know I was at the one on November 12th, and I think I was at the one for June 23rd, but the April 14th and May 15th, I definitely was not at. Okay. So if you're going to read them, then we should, then we should wait. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, no. So we'll, so we'll, 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 we'll table uh, the, the meeting minutes topic until the, until the next hearing. And hopefully by that time, uh, th things will be on Google drive and as many of us as possible can, can review as many of the minutes of the meetings that we were at in the meantime. All right. Any, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Michael. This is Mike Seeky. You could ask one more question. Um, Angela, is uh, much like we're doing a vote here, um, is, there a, is there a number of uh, commissioners that have to review and possibly initial uh, each one of these sets of minutes so that um, legally it, it looks like there is a quorum, I guess? That's what I'm going to use as a term. This is Angela here. So, yes, yeah, so technically all the commissioners should be reviewing this since all the commissioners would have to vote on the meeting minutes. Okay. Um, even if the commission was not there, they still should review them. Um, okay. This was the advice from the city clerk just to kind of clean it up because we do need to have a quorum to vote them in, even though they technically are public record already. Um, it is, it would be, what's the word? It would not look good on the commission if we did not vote them in and something did come up and there was an error on them. It would make us look like we did not um, do our jobs and due diligence to double check them. Okay. In the recording, I'm sorry, this is Mike Seeking, and, and the recording is always is always captured as well and stored, right? Correct. Um, and when when and if we do go back in person, there is always um, Lemons there Access Television does come to City Hall and record the meetings as well. Okay. Angela, All right, good. again, I, I, this is Rich Gullick again. I still get stuck on the ones where I wasn't there. It's just so we're supposed to read them and see if there's any errors. How do I know if there's errors? Because I don't know what's going on. I'm, I still well, get the, stuck on them. Well, the, you, you, Jeffrey, going, unless you actually went back and watched all the videos, how would we know that our edits are correct? You know, so I mean, it, it, oh. if there's a question long term, we're going to have to, there's someone's got to look at the video anyway. Because as much as we, well, you know, if you have a recollection of a, of a meeting, I, I've, I've had too many meetings in my work where I create meeting minutes, send them out for everybody to look at, 
And then six months later, someone will someone will say, oh, I didn't say that at the meeting. It's we were already past the point of trying mm -hmm. to fix it. You know what I'm saying? So even if we correct these right. meeting minutes to what we remember for the meeting, someone could still say that that's not what happened. So they'll have to look at the video anyway. But that's what I mean. That's that's really the 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 source document of record forensic right. anyways, and it's all there. So, yeah. Yeah, but if they mishear a name, we should correct the name. Yeah. yeah. If we know the correct name, and that's what some of the edits we did were. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and also the, the you know, who, this is Mike Seeky, I'm sorry, who who said what, you know, it, it, it's all he said, she said, that kind of stuff, and you don't, unless you, you know, correct that part that Chris Anderson said this, or Mike Seeky said this, it, it, if we know what that is, then it's it's open to interpretation of who we was or he was. And that, those are the types of things I was looking looking at on the ones that I did. Yeah, I, I, th I think in, in, in the case where there might, might be some confusion, confusion about who we is, we or they is, um, then we do, we'll just leave it and just maybe, maybe make a note. Then we can always just use the audio and or video as, okay. as, 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 as the, uh, the definitive backup. All right, I, th I think I'd, I'd like to move on, move on from this uh, agenda item. But so uh, to sum up, uh, Angela, we'll, we'll put these we'll put these and 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 the future minutes on that google drive for us to review um each of us will make our best effort um to, to review minutes as as they get posted review and edit and comment on minutes um and then hopefully at the at the, at the next meeting we, we can vote on vote on hopefully at least these um uh, to, to to get them uh get them finalized all right moving on uh under enforcement angela can go to the scroll a little bit There we go. Thank Did you. Did it go? I apologize. Yep. yep, got it. So, so hold on just just a second. Yeah, uh, yeah. Under enforcement. Okay. The first item: uh, Peninsula on Lakeshore Drive, bank road, and due to pass alteration. Um, Michael, you uh, you are the the person in uh, uh, that that's uh, responsible for this, I guess, for lack, for lack of a better term. So, do you want to go ahead and, and recuse yourself? This is Michael Seeky. I'm recusing myself from the meeting at this point. All right. Thank you. Okay, so um, where we are uh, is uh, we're ready for an, uh, an, I'll call it an interim inspection. So the plan that I put before the commission uh, basically was to correct some previous erosion that had started as a result of some construction a number of years ago. And what I proposed was to put a line of a very large stone along the bank to stop future erosion and then a, um, a buffer zone of plantings, um, and then a, a, as a finished barrier to the top of the slope to make sure that uh, this is permanently repaired. So at this point, um, what has happened is I've put in all of the stone that is in place for the area of disturbance that was approved, actually a little bit less because we found a, a, um, another issue that has to be remediated later on, but the stone is in place. There are um, embedded waddles into the stone, which I left because they were they had um, um, they, they were offering more protection than the stone was. So I left the the waddles in place um, and brought the stone up to where I think is the is the demarcation point where where we should start the planting area and get the root structure going. I've laid down um, mat uh, biodegradable um, straw mats on everything, but of course now the snow has covered them. So I went the other day and I bought another layer of mats so that uh, Angela can come out and, and having two layers of mats there is only gonna be better, not worse. And then it's no big deal to put them down. And I put additional waddles at the start of the stone. So there's there are fresh waddles staked in place every three feet, uh, protecting the stone. The stone has waddles embedded into it so there's virtually nothing. I think it's bulletproof at this point and at least good for an interim inspection. I can't really, I don't think I can clear the order until I get the planting material in there. Um, that can't happen obviously till spring, but I think I've got everything in place um, over and above the call of duty to, to have uh, Angela or y'all come out and take a look at it, what's there and, and um, uh, take, take a look. 
All right, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. This, this is Chuck Raymond. Uh, just a, I haven't been there yet, Michael, but just just a uh, quick question. Hopefully, it's not too ignorant. But the 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 stones and the and the straw water that you put down. I'm sorry. Those, are those at the top of the bank or the bottom of the bank? They're at the bottom of the bank. At the, okay. All right. That, that's that's yeah. when I initially was listening. I was thinking top, but as you went on, my it sounded like it was it was at the bottom. Is what I wanted to clarify. Okay. Well, actually, I, what I've done is I've surrounded the whole tip of the peninsula, even the areas that I, I'm, I have no intention of di disturbing or we're, we're going to disturb, just so that if anything happened to slip off the other side of the of the hill, um, it, it would be it would be captured. So that's all um, protected with 12 inch wattles and, and large stone. But the area of disturbance has rocked to the water. They've lowered the the, the body of water um, for the winter for cleanup. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the stone is all lined down there. It comes up about two feet onto the bank where the uh, where wattles were embedded into it. Comes up another layer uh, in front of the final layer of, of rock. There is now a, an additional set of staked wattles, and then underneath the whole thing, right down to the shoreline, is at least one layer of erosion fabric. And there's going to be two layers so that Angela can see it uh, on top of the snow whenever it warms up a little bit. All right, thank you. About uh, how, how big are these stones? Are these what six, six, eight inch stones? Are they? Oh no, this is, these are these are boulders. The boulders, these so like German. they're not going to move. Uh, I wanted. Yeah, go ahead. No, just so they're like two, two, three, four feet in diameter, or something somewhere in that ballpark. Yes. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. Okay. All right. Going good. Anywhere. Thank you. Uh, is, is that uh, anything else, Michael? Yeah, yeah. The other thing that I did, I took the extra step. I got them from Graves and Graves. I don't know if you know them, but they do the um, septic stone. Uh, they're the only, I think they're the only, Jeff probably knows this better than I do. I think they're one of the few people that uh, do process wash, pro process gravel for septic systems. So I bought them from them and they power washed everything just because I didn't know where the stuff was coming from. So we took that extra step. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments for Michael? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, thank you, uh, Angela. What, what 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 do we need to do? Nothing we need to do at this point, do we? Except maybe go go visit the site. This is Angela here. Yes. Um. So there's nothing else to be done. I do need to go out there on a site visit and take a look. Um. And I did, did want to let the commission know um, that we did receive the notice of intent for the rest of the work being done on this project. You'll be seeing that shortly. All right, thank you. Um, I, 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 I might like to. I, I might want to go out there and check it out. Um, maybe I'll meet Michael out there. And anybody else who wants to meet me. Um, but uh, I, I know the general area, but I don't know exactly where on Peninsula, uh, on Lakeshore Drive, this is. Is there a map or something we can get? Uh, yes. Uh, it, it's actually. I'll, 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 if you know where the spillway is, we can just like visit, and we can um, travel down together as well. If anyone yeah. wants to, Angel's been there. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. All right. When you go, when you go to, when you get on Lakeshore Drive and you go to the end, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. The very end. Okay. Got <laughs> you it. You can't get lost. Makes sense. Otherwise, you'll fall in the lake, right? Exactly. All right. Good. Any direction. All right. So they will, they'll bring that 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 hearing to an end. Michael, do you want to uh, unrecuse yourself? Uh, yeah. Is there is there a term before I unrecuse myself? I have no, idea. <laughs> I have no so idea. Would, this is Mike Seeky. I would like to join the meeting again as a conservation commission. That sounds good to me. Uh, and I was a disrecuse, whatever it is. All I'm right. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, next one. Nine Kendall Hill Road. Uh, still waiting for engineers to submit plans. Angela, anything for us on that one? Um, at this time, the engineering firm, they are pretty backed up. They're starting to get around to, they're starting to get around to it. They're just, um, everyone's backed up like three or four weeks. So it's been kind of difficult. Um, so, okay. But they have right, contracted you. with the homeowners. We will be seeing a plan shortly. All right. Thank you. Yep. Everybody's backed up. All right. 1775 Lock Drive. I see you took the E off the end of Lock. But 1775 Lock Drive, additional alteration to the riverfront area. I know with this, this was on the, the agenda for last meeting. What, 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 uh, can you remind us what, what the situation is? Um, so at the, this is Angela at the last meeting, the commission did issue the enforcement order. Um, I have sent it out. The applicant has received it. 
And basically now we're just waiting for them to file the notice of intent for the uh, restoration and whatever they, the additional alteration that they will be keeping in the riverfront area. Okay, so just waiting for the for the for the the NOI. Okay, all right, good. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that as as, as it progresses. All right, thank you, Angela. Uh, emergency certifications. We have nothing on, uh, on on that on the agenda. Moving, continuing to move down. Uh, the budget issue again. Request for transition of money from from uh, WPA fund to fund an intern position in the office. Uh, Angela, it looks like you're still drafting a letter to the mayor um, along with a job description. As Angela here, yes. Um, so unfortunately, there have been quite a few COVID cases at City Hall. So people have been out and I've been trying to um, coordinate with a couple other departments, kind of see how they finance their intern position, as well as I have to work with the comptroller on the requisition um, aspect from the Wealth and Protection Act fund, because it does need to be approved by city council after the commission votes to make that amount requisition. So I'm in the process of trying to coordinate with everybody, but it's been extremely difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. All right, thank you. Well, good good luck with it and let us know how we can help. Um, anybody have any questions or comments for Angela on, on the on the uh, the intern position? No? Okay. All right, moving on. The last meeting, last item is the next meeting. Actually, I'm sorry, the next last meeting before we get to the adjournment. Um, the, the, the next hearing will be January 25th, 2022. Uh, the deadline was, was this past Friday, January 7th, um, for filing. Uh, moving on to the adjournment, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting then? Well, this is Michael Seeke. I will make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Michael. Do I have a second? This is Liz, I'll second. I, I, I caught Liz. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. All right, Angela. This is Angela here. The rest of the vote, excuse me, will be done by roll call. Jeffrey Goyne, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. Um, Richard Gullick, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. And Chairman Chuck Raymond, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. So the motion carries to adjourn the January 11th Lemon Star Conservation Commission meeting at 6.54 p.m. All right. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a good night.